All right, so tonight I want to talk about some flashcards I have here. Um, my favorite one in particular is this one here. This is like a, uh, this is based off of the MBC3 uh, memory bank switcher, and it uses actual hardware from a real Game Boy cart. Uh, and then it uses FRAM batteryless saving. Uh, so you don't, so even though this has a battery, this is only to power the real time clock hardware in it doesn't actually, you know, if I pop the battery out, it'll still hold the save and I can still save and everything will work fine. Uh, but it also uses a AM29FO16 chip. Uh, it's about two megabytes of storage and I can reflash it with pretty much whatever ROM I want. Most of them, even if they're designed for a different memory bank controller, still seem to work fine on the MBC3 variant. Um, there's also this thing I have here. Uh, I ordered this from J. Rodrigo on, well, not really on Etsy because he doesn't sell the Pokemon Crystal variant on Etsy directly. Kind of have to email him on that. I don't remember the cost, but I think it was about like 27 bucks, give or take. And this is largely the same thing. Uh, this one normally shouldn't have a wire. I kind of messed up soldering and had to run a bodge wire. But this one normally does have a wire, and this is so that you can flash it. But this is just a regular Pokemon Crystal game, just like this. Uh, and I already, already got the screws out on this one. But instead, they pulled off the ROM chip, which is this one on the right here, and then replaced it with the same chip I have in here, the AM29FO16. But this one is using one of these little adapters here. Uh, I picked these up on Osh Park here, also from J. Rodrigo. They're really cheap. I think you only paid like four bucks for six of them. Six of them. Uh, unfortunately, some of them had some defects, and quite frankly, I don't even know if these will work. But hopefully, all will be well. And I've already got one of these boards prepared. I'm gonna try and put one together tonight. Hopefully, I don't make a total mess of things. I've already. Uh, what I like to do is, uh, I like to secure them to like a metal plate I have and this is just an old plate out of my 3D printer that I've since replaced and I just hit it with the heat gun until the memory chip falls off and I have everything else taped down so that I won't accidentally knock any other chips off or uh, you know on the first one of these that I did this way I noticed that the boards themselves were a little bit sensitive to heat and I kind of warped it so I like taping it down to this metal plate here to act as a heat sink and to help protect the board a little bit from warpage. Um, anyway, I'm going to be using these bad boys here. I got a few of them new. I'm going to go ahead and pull this one out. And to get started, normally you just start soldering that down, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I have one of these things here. This is a... Uh, Sorry, just making some room here. This is a cart reader uh, designed by Sani, I believe it is. And I, I built this myself. I ordered the PCB. Uh, it's battery powered, and I got a little meter in there to tell me that it's more or less fully charged. And this thing is super cool. Works on Game Boy carts, works on Super Nintendo, works on um, Nintendo 64, Mega Drive, or Genesis. Or you can make these little adapters here. And this one, in particular, is for these AM29 chips. Just drop that in there. Alright, and then stick that into the Super Nintendo slot. We'll boot this up. Okay, good, I do have a memory card in there. Go down to Flash ROM Programmer. Uh, the 8-bit flash adapter and it didn't recognize the flash ROM so that means something is not right. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. This is why I like pre-programming them. Sometimes you just get bad memory chips or sometimes it's just not seated properly. Okay, take two. Turn that on. Still saying unknown flash room. Hmm. Dump 
dump that out. I'm going to try another chip here. This is part of the reason why I like pre-programming them. You get these on eBay or AliExpress and sure it says new on the product page but we know we all know good and well that they aren't new or that sometimes they aren't even legit. Unknown flash ROM. Gee, what a riveting video is that? Centered, let's try centering that. Hmm. Well, I'm going to pause while I get this sorted. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. It took a little bit. I think what's going on is some of the pins aren't exactly perfectly lined up on here, and there are a shitload of little pins there. Helps if you keep it in frame. Anyway, found one that interfaced with the adapter just fine. Put it in there. It says Flash ROM Writer 8 bit, Flash ID 0180, AM29 FO16B detected. That's good. So, what I want to do, I want to do a uh, erase. That'll take a second here. What a riveting video. Turn that off, maybe you can see a little bit better. And there's a little LED on the bottom there. Flash arm erased. Operation took 17 seconds. Press button. All right, now I want to write. I'm going to put on here crystal clear. I already have a good dump from, uh, from another cart here. That's going to flash. I think this takes something like a minute, so I'm going to set that aside and start working on this thing. So, I already went ahead and desoldered the chip. I'm going to go ahead and smooth out these solder points. I think I need some flux here. Yeah. Alright. I'm going to use this paste flux I have here from Qualitech. Uh, I picked this up locally. It's pretty good stuff. I just have a uh, Q-tip in there that I'm using to apply. I'm just going to slather that on there. Bigger the gob, better the job. All right. Move that along. Looks a lot better. So it looks like this thing finished flashing. Now it's verifying. And all is well. So on this ROM chip here, let me turn that off, pull that out. On this ROM chip, I have crystal clear. So you can flash these things once they're fully assembled. Uh, you don't have to get a cart reader and do it this way. I just like doing it this way because it helps me troubleshoot, uh, figure out what I did wrong if it doesn't work right away. Okay, so now this thing, I'm pretty sure this side goes down. Uh, but that's why I've got my other cart here to double check. Uh, so you can't see shit, but I can see that extra solder point, which is right down here, goes towards the bottom there. So I'm going to try and get this soldered on first, then add the flash chip. So you want to get this lined up, and interestingly, mine doesn't appear to line up. of this little capacitor down here. So what I'm gonna do I don't have it. Okay, I'm going to go grab my files and take a little bit off that chip. Okay. So just a cheapo set of needle files here. I picked this up at Harbor Freight for a couple bucks. And I'm just going to get one of these files here. And I'm going to take some off the bottom corner. Right. 
That's a lot better. Both sides lining up. Eh, almost. A little bit more. Another thing you can do is probably just remove that capacitor and then solder it on after you've got this in here. Okay, that'll work. So luckily, the board is nice and tacky because of the flux. It's going to hold that in place here. Get my solder. and get this tacked down somehow or another. A blob of solder on there or something. There we go. Oh, that didn't work at all. So Jay Rodrigo did post these files public and he did say they are a pain in the rear to solder. And so far, he has proved not to be a liar. These are not that easy to solder. The uh, other version, there's two different versions of the adapter. There's this one as well. These are from an older build, but you can see how different the spacing is. And everything's a lot closer together. These are a lot easier to solder, but of course they don't work with these crystal cards. I'm gonna add some more flux. Part of the appeal of these crystal carts is the uh, cool silk screen they got on the back. Flux is your friend. You want to add as much as po well, no, I don't want to say that. You don't want to add as much as possible, but you want to add as much as you need. It uh basically makes soldering easy mode. Okay, that side is done. Is that side done? side's done as well. You gotta double check that all of your traces, or all of your holes rather, are soldered. And there aren't any shorts. Okay. That's done. Now we want to do the chip itself. And I'm gonna add some more flux. Smear it on there. And this dot is the top left, and it goes with that dot there as well. Stick that on there. It's not even close to lined up, but that's all right. I'll fix that. I'll put the iron down for now. And get these last two on there.
Ooh, I shouldn't have done that. Might have to desolder this and redo it. That's more flux. You just want to drown this thing in flux. You can still see the chip, you're not using enough flux. Good. Struggling with this side now. So I'm going to use my soldering braid. And it does not matter if the very last two pins on any of the four corners, if those two are shorted, you can just leave it because those two, or I guess those eight pins total are not connected to anything. Oh, I am not having a good time. There we go. Okay. Next, we need one more, and I am making a mess of this. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit of wire I have here cut off. So there's one pad, and it needs to go to one of these vias down here. So it looks like it goes to this one. If I can get that soldered. There. So there's one, two, three vias. It is the fourth one. It's over one, two, three, four, fifth. It's over the fifth pin there. My hands are all sticky from the flux. Okay, that's soldered down. It is a bit too long. I should probably trim it before I solder it down. Desolder it.
Okay. That this will do. Now, hopefully, it still works. Okay, I'm going to slip this into Game Boy and find out. I have one here. There it is. Nintendo sign, that's a good sign. Oh, yes! Beautiful! Come on. Yes. So, yeah, of course, there's no save file. Uh, this cart is still using the original SRAM. So, it needs a battery in there. But if we plug it into our reader here... PM Crystal, NBC3 plus timer plus RAM. ROM size 2 megabyte, banks 128. And we can go down to Flash NBC3 cart. And oh, my SD card is all messed up. Hang on. I just set up the SD card for this reader so I don't have to swap back and forth between the two. ROM. Oh, darn it. Uh, GB, ROM, we will do BYTE, which is just regular Pokemon Crystal. Recognize the AM29 FO16B, Banks 128 out of 128. Racing Flash, we will set that down, let it go. I'll put away my flux here. It is erased successfully. It is now writing the ROM. I've got here a tab battery. This is just a tabbed CR2032. The original battery was completely dead. But, eh, that's what happens. There it is, I already desoldered it. It was from the date tab. The date code is covered up by the uh, tabbed tab there. So I don't know what month it's from, but it's from the year 2000. And it wasn't holding the save anymore, unsurprisingly. All right, so that verified okay. Pull that out. That out of there, and we'll solder that down. I'm probably going to end up removing this battery again in a second because I still got to clean up all this flux. And look at that, now it's Pokemon Crystal. We'll do new game. I'll be a boy. It's not really 10 o'clock, but I'm not keeping this save, so. My name will be Chris. So the sprites aren't corrupted, which means the SRAM is working. Let's just double check and make sure that it's actually saving. On uh, the Pokemon ROMs itself, when, like, if you boot it up and, and Professor Oak is just a random image of just 
I guess, a, a static image there. It's not actually Professor Oak. That usually means there's something wrong with the SRAM chip itself. And just prove you no know, hijinks. Boot that up. Let's double check that it's actually holding the save. And continue. 1001. Look at that. So there is a brand new flash cart for myself. I have no idea what I'm going to put on this one because I already have a uh, crystal clear flash cart, which is actually what this case is from, hence the label. Uh, I've already got a Pokemon Prism, but whatever, that's for another time. I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up and buttoned up, and I will uh, talk to you guys next time. Thanks for sticking around. So just a quick addendum, because uh, I forgot to cover this. If you need something, some hardware to be able to flash these carts, uh, you can either pick up Ben Ben's Joey Joe bags, uh, Inside Gadgets, GBX Cart RW. Uh, you can make yourself one of these bad boys. This is a open source clone of Jay Rodrigo's Cart Flasher, uh, which itself is an open source clone, so take that how you will. Uh, this was made by my buddy HDR here. Uh, that This piece of paper that I've been using as a... Uh, little desk protector here actually has his new prototype reader on it uh, and this is printed to scale you can see it's quite a bit smaller than the original uh, it should the, the the idea is that the whole cart reader itself fits under the cartridge connector which would solder on there um, this one's untested but I'll go ahead and throw a link to it this one was untested as well until I built it and uh, well I'm sorry, I wasn't the first one to build this. Uh, it was an open source public project and someone else beat me to the punch. Uh, but it's pretty easy to assemble. You just need the AT Mega chip, a serial adapter, a crystal, a few supporting capacitors, and a USB port really. Um, but I'd recommend the new version. It's a lot smaller. Not necessarily easier to assemble, but it shouldn't be any more difficult either. Uh, another option, of course, is you can make your own Sandy cart reader. These things are super handy to have, but they're a little, so far, the priciest option. Or if you saw this earlier, this is my own clone of Sandy's cart reader, except that it only works with uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Advance carts. Uh, but it, it's, it's still a work in progress. I've already got a new revision of this on the way, and I'll make a video when I get that. As you can see, there are a few... Uh, mistakes I had to correct on the initial version uh, but yeah I'll make a video when I get to that otherwise that's how you make your own uh, flash cart there and uh, keep on being awesome thanks